boy. A pilot. I was a stupid nurse. We made our breakers always steering. And I did not catch the word right through being hard of hearing. <laughs> Mistaking my instructions with within my brain did gyrate. I took and found his promising boy apprentice to a ceases. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable, but collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. <laughs> Pity me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty, that once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself, heart and soul, to your extermination. Poor oh, oh, lad! Poor oh, lad! Well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel it is your duty to destroy us, we can't blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why. But alas, I mustn't tell you. It wouldn't be right. Why not, my boy? It's only... Half past eleven. Your one of us to the clock strikes twelve. Yeah, true, and until then, you're bound to protect our interests. Yeah. 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 Well then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you. But you're too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. There's some truth in that. And then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Oh, that's right. Of course, we're all orphans ourselves and we know what it is. Yes, but the word has got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. <laughs> so we had to let them go. One would think Britain's entire mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylums, which we know is not the case. Hang it all! You wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. Oh, no. Well, there's my difficulty. Until 12, I would. After 12, I wouldn't. Whatever a man placed in so delicate a situation Ruth, your own Ruth, loves <laughs> so well. She has much won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart. Hooray! What has become of her now? Oh, he will take you with him. Yes! Well, Ruth, I feel a little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you, but I've been constantly at sea since I was eight years old. And yours is the only woman's face I've seen in that time. I think it is a sweet face. Oh, it is. Yes. It is? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> I say, I think it is. As I have never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, 
just could be that I was mistaken. <laughs> no. 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 True. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing if I were to marry this innocent person and then find that she is on the whole plain? No, Ruth is very well. Well? Yes, very well. Yes. Very well. Yes. yes, there are the the remains of a fine woman about. <laughs> do you really think so? Uh, I do. Then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. <laughs> in justice to her, and in consideration for you, I'll leave her behind. <laughs> no, Frederick, no, no, this no. must not be. We are rough men. Yeah. We need a rough life. Yeah. But we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I'm right in saying there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Oh, no. No. no! I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick, keep thy love. Yes. You're very kind, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Frederick, it's the top of the tide and we must away. When your process of extermination begins, may our deaths be as swift and as painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization? No, Frederick, this cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it's comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king. <laughs> Under the brave black flag I fly <laughs> Than play a sanctimonious part With a pirate head and a pirate heart <laughs> Away to the cheating world go you <laughs> Where pirates all are well to do But I'll be true to the song I sing And live and die A glorious thing to be a pirate king, for I am a pirate king. You are the rock a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a rock a pirate king, the rock a pirate king. When I sat forth to seek my prey, I held myself in a hurry. Glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a rock the pirate king, a rock the pirate king. if I'm left behind. Ruth, I will be quite candid with you. You are very 
dear to me, as you know. But I must be circumspect. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You will find me a wife of a thousand. No. But I shall find you a wife of 47. And that is quite enough. Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve, compared with other women, just... Well, are you... How are you? I will answer you truthfully, Master. I have a slight cold, but otherwise I am quite well. I'm sorry for your cold, but I was referring more to your, your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you beautiful? I have been told so, dear Master. Yes, but lately? Oh no, years and years ago. What do you think of yourself? That is a delicate question to answer, but I think I'm a fine woman. That is your candid opinion. I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you, for I'm sure you would not practice on my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing. And if, I say if, you really are a fine woman, your age should be no obstacle to our union. but inaccessible there. Can it be Custom House? No, it doesn't sound like Custom House. Confusion. It's the voices of young girls. Patience in there. I am lost. <laughs> By all that's marvellous. A bevy of beautiful maidens. Lost. Lost. How lovely, how surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them. What grace, what delicacy, what refinement. And Ruth, Ruth told me she was beautiful. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold And master, have I done so? And now I see you're plain and old I'm sure I'm not a job so Upon my innocence you play I'm not the one to plot so Your face is lined, your hair is grey It's gradually got so Faithless woman to deceive me I who trusted so Master, master, do not leave me Hear me ere you go Faithless woman Master, master Faithless woman Master, master Faithless woman to deceive me I who trusted so Faithless woman to deceive me Thank you.
shall I do before these gentle maidens I dare not show in this alarming costume? No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. <laughs> Enchanting spot. Except the mermaids. Oh, the very place the mermaids! Oh, the human beings down to the waist. And you can't be so strictly to set foot anywhere. <laughs> Tails! Oh, no. The feet they cannot. But what shall we do until Papa arrives for the luncheon? We are quite alone, and the sea is as smooth as glass. Why don't we take off our shoes? Oh, no. And stop it! Oh, no. And paddle! Yes! yes. 
Stop, ladies, pray. I had intended not to intrude myself upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings here will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, Sasty? I am a pirate! Ah! A pirate! Hurrah! <laughs> Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession. And to that end, O oh, pure and peerless maidens, O oh, blushing buds of ever-blooming beauty, I saw at heart, I saw at heart, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful his tale. Who would not give up willingly all matrimonial ambition to rescue such an one as I from his unfortunate position, from his position to rescue such an one as from his unfortunate possession. Alas, there's not one made to rest which seems to fill a moral beauty on making worldly interest subordinate to sense of Is that 
that he not been a thing of beauty, would she be swayed by quite as keen a sense of duty? For shame, for shame, for shame. Poor wandering one, oh, surely strain. Take out of grace, Christ that we trace.
you beaming? How beautifully blue the sky, the glass is rising very high. Continue fine, I hope it may, and yet it rain, but yes, you do. Continue fine, I hope it may, and yet it rain, but yes, you do. How beautiful the sky, the glass is rising very high. Major General, I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fight historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. <laughs> I'm very well acquainted to in matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical about binomial theorem and teeming with a lot of news. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and immaculous, but still in matters vegetable, animal and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. Still in matters vegetable, animal and mineral. He is the very model of a modern major general. I know a mythic history of King Arthur's as a catadox. I've answered hard acrostics, I've a pretty taste for paradox. I quote in LHEX all the crimes of Heliogabalus in cunning sight and flaw peculiarities parabolas. <laughs> I can tell and dotted Raphael from Gerald Dozen's Ophanies. I know the croaking chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. The night on Hammer Fugue of which I've heard the music's dinner for. <laughs> And the whistle of the S and that infernal nonsense pinafore. The whistle of the S and that infernal nonsense pinafore. The whistle of the S and that infernal nonsense pinafore. 
and I can write a washing bill in Babylonic uniform. I tell you every detail of Karatikus's uniform. But still, it matters vegetable, animal and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> In fact, when I know what is meant by mamelon and ravelin, when I can tell at sight a mouse a rifle from a javelin, when such affairs as sorties and surprises I'm more wary at, and when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat, <laughs> when I have learnt what progress has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery. Yes. In short, when I've a smattering of elemental strategy. Strategy. <laughs> You'll say a better major general has never sat. <laughs> From a military knowledge, though in plucky and adventure, as any people down from the beginning of the century, but still in my respect, animal and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. Say that the general is a very model of a modern major general. Do it again, could you? Uh, well, yes, of course. Uh, but this time, faster. <laughs> if I can only watch me my mammy on unraveling, when I can tell a sight of eyes arrived from a javelin, with such a fact, I saw the sense of prize on my worry at, and when I know precisely what is meant, my commissary at. <laughs> when I have no more progress, I've been made in modern gunnery. When I know more of tightness and an office in an honorary, and sure, whenever smattering of elemental strategy, you'll say a better major general has never run a horse. <laughs> Military knowledge, knowing plucky and adventure, has any people down from the beginning of the century? Must tell him that is vegetable, animal and mineral. I am the very man of them, but I'm in general. And now that I've introduced myself. I should like to have some idea about what's going on here. Uh, oh. Permit me. I'll explain, I'll explain in two words. We propose to marry your daughters. Against our wills! Or against our wills! No, no, no. No, you mustn't do that. <laughs> May I ask? This is a uh, picturesque uniform, but I'm not familiar with it. What are you? We're all single gentlemen. <laughs> well, well, yes. I mean, I gathered that. Anything else? No, nothing else. Oh, don't believe them. They are pirates. The famous pirates of Penzance. The pirates of Penzance? Yes, I've often heard of them. Well, except this gentleman, who was a pirate once, but who is out of his indentures today and means to lead a blameless life evermore. But, but, but wait a bit. I object to pilots as sons-in-law. Well, we object to major generals as fathers-in-law. <laughs> but we waive that point. We do not press it. We look over it. <laughs> Aha! An idea. <laughs> uh, do you mean to say that you have deliberately robbed me of these? The sole remaining props of my old age? And leave me to go through the remainder of my life unfriended? Unprotected and alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, <laughs> there we are again. Well, I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan? Well, well yes, orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say, an orphan. Orphan, orphan, orphan! I don't think we quite understand one another. Now, now, when I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan, you say orphan. As I understand you, you are merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. 
I did not repeat the word often. Pardon me, you did indeed. I repeated it only once. True. But you repeated it. But not often. Let's stop. <laughs> I think I see where we're getting confused. Now, now, when you say orphan, do you mean orphan, a person who has lost his parents? Or orphan, frequently? Oh. Oh, I see what you mean. I beg your pardon. <laughs> frequently. Ah. So you said orphan frequently. No, only once. Oh. Exactly. You said orphan frequently, only once. <laughs> Of dark and dismal fate, forgo your cruel employ. Have pity on my lonely state. I am an orphan boy. An orphan boy. An orphan boy. How sad an orphan boy. These children who see are all that I can call my own. Orphan. Take them away from me and I shall be indeed alone. Orphan. If pity you can feel, leave me my soul. Remaining joy. See, at your feet they kneel, your heart you cannot steal. Against the sad, sad tale of the long lay, oh, the boy, oh, Members of 
Sometimes is a useful thing to be an orphan boy. It is hurrah, the orphan boy, hurrah, the orphan boy. Oh, happy day with joy, a speedy will away, and merry be. Oh, happy day with joy, a speedy will away, and merry be. Should be full of species, be my sister's old and bright with me. Should be full of species, be my sister's old and bright with me. Oh, happy day with joy, a speedy will away, and merry be.
with your conscience to say something to relieve my father's sorrow. Pardon? Can't you cheer him up? I will try, dear Mabel. But why does he sit here night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? Last, why do I sit here? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, you're right. You're so clever. You're so clever, aren't you? Clever little bear. Yes, you are. Sir? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, sorry. To escape from the pirate's clutches, I describe myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I am no orphan. I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for bringing dishonor upon the family escutcheon. But you forget, sir, you only bought the property a year ago and the stucco in your baronial hall is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel are ancestors. You cannot deny that. <coughs> With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I uh, don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their descendant by purchase, if I may so describe myself, may have brought dishonor on what I have no doubt was an unstained discussion. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would have called in the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. I thank you for your proffered solace, Frederick, but it is un unavailing. I assure you, my boy, that such is the anguish and remorse I feel at the, at the abominable falsehood by which I escaped these easily deluded pirates, that I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all. Did I not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous to myself? At what time does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At eleven, and before midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with these pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. But are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. Then, Frederick. Let your escort, lion-hearted, be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon their dread adventure, dear sir, they come. <gasps> <laughs> It's to slap our chests and sing Tarantara Oh, and threaten with a mute Tarantara, Tarantara And your heart is in your boot Tarantara There is nothing brings it round Like the trumpet's martial sound Like the trumpet's martial sound Tarantara, Tarantara, Tarantara Tarantara, Tarantara, he's a 
intentions are well meant. Tarantara. Such expressions don't appear. Tarantara, tarantara. Calculated men to cheer. Tarantara. Who are going to meet their fate in a highly nervous state? Tarantara, tarantara, tarantara. Still to us it's evident these attentions are well meant. Tarantara, tarantara, tarantara. On the wrist that's on us press And of reference a To our chance of coming back So perhaps it would be wise Not to carp or criticise It's very evident These attentions are well meant Yes, it's very evident These attentions are well meant Evident, yes, well meant Evident, ah, yes, well meant When the world appears is here to run Ha 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 
We knew your taste for curious quips, for cranks and contradictions queer And with the laughter on our lips we wished you there to hear We knew if we could tell it him how Frederick would the joke enjoy And so we've risked both life and limb to tell it to our boy The paradox, the paradox, that most ingenious paradox With quips and quibbles and in flocks, but now to beat this paradox a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> it's paradox. <laughs> For some ridiculous reason, to which, however, I've no desire to be disloyal. Someone in authority, I don't know who, very likely the astronomer royal, has decided that though such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty. Or one year in every four, its day shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were due to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You, you have been the victim of this clumsy arrangement having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. Thus, for a simple arithmetical process, you will easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, yet, if we go by birthdays, you're in fact only five and a little bit over. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me, let's see. Yes, yes, with yours my fingers do agree. <laughs> How quaint the ways of paradox that common sense she gaily mocks, though counting in the usual way years 21 I've been alive. Yet reckoning by my natal day, yet reckoning by my natal day, I am a little boy of five. He is a little boy of five. <laughs> <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. This paradox, a curious paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> This is most curious, <laughs> most absurdly whimsical. Five and a quarter. No one would think it to look at me. <laughs> you are glad now, I'll be bound, that you spared us. You never would have forgiven yourself when you realised you'd killed two of your comrades. <laughs> My comrades? <laughs> I don't think you quite realised the delicacy of your position. You were apprentice to us. Until I reached my 21st year. No, until you reached your 21st birthday. And in going by birthdays, you're in fact only five and a quarter. You don't mean to say you're going to hold me to that. <laughs> no. We merely remind you of the fact. Leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty. Don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond, just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. Your duty. Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty, and my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought that I was ever mixed up with it. But duty is before all, and at any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on. I follow. Oh, horror! What, what is, is the matter? matter? 
Ought I to tell you? No, I can't do it. And yet, as one of your band... Speak out! But that sense of consciousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. General Stanley, the father of my Mabel... Yes, yes, yes. yes. He escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan. He did! Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> Carry on. It breaks my heart to betray the honoured father of the girl I adore. But as your apprentice, I have no alternative. It is my duty to tell you that General Stanley is no orphan. What? More than that, he never was one. <laughs> Am I to understand that in order to save his contemptible life, he dared to practice on our curricular simplicity? Our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We shall collect our band and attack Jumordan Castle this very night. But stay. Not a word, he is doomed. Away, away, my heart's on fire. I burn this base deception to repay. This very night, with vengeance star, shall blot itself in gore. Away, 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 away. I hear I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish dire. It strikes me to the car away, away. With Paul's and foul, he tricks us on our pride. Then vengeance how the crime was all besides. Our nature stirred, he softened with his lies. And in return tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, or early tomorrow. His girls likewise. They will welter in sorrow. Thorns or spot. In their natures they cherish. And all who plot. To a beauty shall perish. Tonight he dies. It's or early tomorrow. His girls likewise they shall welter in sorrow. The ones are spot in their natures they cherish. And all who plot to a beauty shall perish. Away, away, away. Tonight the traitor dies. just been made. Mabel, my dearly loved one, I swore myself to serve the pirate captain until I reached my one and twentieth birthday. But you are twenty-one. I've just discovered that I was born in leap year and that birthday will not be reached by me till nineteen. Forty. Oh, horrible, catastrophe appalling. And so farewell. Oh, Frederick, hear me. Stay, Frederick, stay. They have no legal claim, no shadow of a shame will fall. I quit these walls, but thought my soul appalled, but when stern duty calls, I must obey. Stay, Frederick, stay. Nay, Mabel, nay. They have no claim. But duty's name the thought my soul appalled, but when
must I leave thee here in endless night to dream Where all is dark and drear and sorrow all supreme When nature day by day will sing in altered tone This weary round delay He loves thee, he is gone In 1940, I of age shall be. I'll then return and claim you. I declare it. It's it so long. Swear that till then you will be true to me. Yes, I'll be strong. My old spell is dead and gone. I swear it. For oh, here is love, and here is truth, and here is food for joy. She will be faithful to her suit till we are wed and even after. Oh, here is love and here is truth. Oh, here is love and here is truth. She will be faithful to her suit till we are wed and even after. And even after. Oh, here is love and here is truth. And here is food for joyous laughter. She will be faithful to her suit till we are wed. She will be faithful to us who till we are wet and even after, even after. Oh, here is love, and here is true. Oh, here is love, is love. These pirates alone. It is 
most distressing for us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to all. <coughs> but we should have thought of that before we joined the force. We should hum. It's too late now. Engaged in his employment, his employment, or maturing his felonious little plans, little plans, his capacity for innocent enjoyment, innocent enjoyment, is just as great as any honest man, honest man. Our feelings we with difficulty smother, difficulty smother, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done. I'll take one consideration with another, with another. A policeman's lot is not an happy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done. A policeman's lot is not an happy one. Happy one. When the enterprising burglar's not a burglar, not, not a burglar. When the comfort is an occupied in crime, occupied in crime. He loves to hear the little a gurgling, Rook a gurgling, and listen to the merry village chime. Village chime. When the cost has finished jumping on his mother, on his mother, he loves to lie a basking in the sun. In the sun, I'll take one consideration with another. With another, a policeman's lot is not an happy one. Oh. When constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is not a happy one, happy one. On the man approaching With healthy steps The pirates are approaching We are the coming of fate Of gold, the story General Stanley told We see the penalty Left in gold, the General Stanley story They seek a penalty Left in gold, we seek a penalty Left in gold, they seek a penalty Left in gold, for General Stanley story They come in force With stealthy stride our obvious course is now to hide. Silent matches 
your dark lantern sees. Take your fire and just get a load to make peace. Cautious way we feel, no sound at all, we never speak a word, a fly's foot fall with bigger stick.
Your proud triumph will not be long lived. Don't say you're orphans, for we know that game. On your allegiance, we've a stronger claim. We charge you yield. We charge you yield. Resume your ranks and legislative duties and take my daughters, all of whom are beauties. Oh, oh, oh. 